Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. We thank God for today. We thank God for you and you and you. I thank God for the support that you've given me. And I thank God for you. I'm praying for you. Today, we'd like to go to the book of Revelation again. Revelation chapter 3. The church of Philadelphia, brotherly love, whom God is well pleased. But before I go to the word, I would like to pray. We need to pray much, saints. This pandemic was going on. And this racist and this injustice and all these things around us and we need unity. So today we're going to go to the throne of grace if you will go with me when we pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, Lord, asking you, God, to have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon those who are sick, Lord, in the hospital still. Oh God, we we COVID-19 and many, Lord Jesus, who are sick in the body and mind. We lift them up in prayer right now. Families, Lord, who lost loved ones and crying and sighing in their home. We pray that you might cheer them up and strengthen them, God, and wipe the weeping eyes. And we are praying, Lord, for what's going on in the street out there right now, God. Oh, God, that people might learn to love one another. And we are praying for the heads of our government, our Senate, Lord Jesus, senators and congressmen and women, Lord Jesus, who work out there, and the policemen, Lord. Oh, God, the mayors and governors, Lord, our president, we lift them up in prayer, God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you might give them wisdom at this time, Lord, when the pandemic and everything is going on at the same time, Lord. Sorrow after sorrow is going on in homes, in family, in the police. We are praying for the police, God, that you might help them to have an understanding heart how to deal with these things at this time. And we pray, Lord, not all of them is bad, but those who are bad, we are praying for them. And those who are the good policemen, we pray that they might be strengthened and encouraged. We need them, Lord. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy upon our nation. We pray for divine healing, Lord. Heal our land, I pray to God. And Lord God, we pray for unity and strength among the black and white and colors, Lord. That all colors might realize that we are all God's people. Hear our prayer, Lord, and have mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. Today I would like to go back to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 3, verse 11 to 13. The church of Philadelphia, we talked about it last week. The church of brotherly love. They love joy in the presence of the Lord. God speaks so much about them. He didn't speak any way of judgment to them. But he speaks about the true and mighty God from everlasting to everlasting. God, he's God, he's a true God. And the Lord speak about this church. You know, as we discuss the hope doors, the doors of opportunity that God made for them, the doors of utterance that they might boldly speak the word, hope and doors that no man can close. God speak about this church and the church of Smyrna so much. But now we are coming to the end of the church age which is after the church is going to be God's judgment, when the hope in the book and the, and the hurt we'll receive is title deed. What will take place? The harmful judgment. God loves his church. The church God purchased with his own blood. So God loved the church. And you don't want us to go through all of those bold, terrible judgment, what will take place on the wicked that forget about God. Today, if you are not the righteous, you are the wicked. And if you are the wicked, you can be the righteous in one day. Because when the Son of God set free, is free indeed. So today, I'm going to talk about the reward of the righteous. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10. He said, because, because you have kept my word, Philadelphia church, righteous church, because you have kept my word. Hear what I'm going to do. You have keep my word. I will keep you from the hour of temptation that will come upon the hurt to try the hurt. What is the hour of temptation? The harmful judgment. God is not willing that his people that serve him day and night should go through this awful judgment that's going to be seen after chapter 4. Verse 11. Behold, I come quickly. That means quickly. Quickly, you're going to come and take away the church quickly. We're going to go have our trouble. We're going to have sorrow. What come to try us? Like the church of Smyrna. 
They were going through trials and tests and forsakenness of the and the hurt. But God come to tell the church of Smyrna, you're rich. So that's what God is saying to this church today. You're rich. And he said, behold, I come quickly. I'm going to snatch away the church one day. Just like what the word of God said in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16. He's going to snatch us away quickly without notice. So we must be ready. Be also ready. Because we know that the day not the hour when the Son of Man cometh. I'm speaking to somebody today who is not really ready. And you got to know, life is not promised. You, you could be next hour in another world. Down, up, or down when you die. Which way? Two, two, two way. One choice. Where, where are you going to spend eternity? And every day a person should get up and think, where we are going to spend eternity. But I know. Because I got my business fixed, I make my choice long ago with Jesus. And I'm struggling and I'm fighting ahead of me every day with the power of the Holy Ghost. I, I, I'm an overcomer. And hear what the Lord said about the overcomer now. He said, These are the overcomer. Him that overcome it, I will make a pillar in my temple. What is a pillar in my temple? Secure forevermore. You are secure. And he talk about the crown. He's going to give you a crown of life. Secure. You are secure with God forevermore. His reward is great. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, Highs have not seen, neither have it entered into the heart of man, the things that God has in store for them that love him. So when God said he's going to make you a pillar in his temple, that means you are secure in Jesus forevermore. We're going to have joy in the presence of the Lord forevermore. Heating from the tree of life. In the great, great world that God has prepared. The great place. Heaven. The tabernacle of God. That he gone to prepare. For those who love him. So today it's time to make a choice. You may, we make a lot of choice and it's hurt. It doesn't work. It's only for a while. But when you make a choice and get your business fixed with Jesus, it's forever. The Bible also talks in the same First Corinthians about Christian who wants to know Jesus. If you want to know Jesus and you, and you stop serving him, you're not going to understand the things of God until you return back to your first love. You're going to say you are babes, you go to church, and you say you go to church, but you're not going to understand you read the word of God, it become foolishness because you're spoon fed. But when you turn to God with all your heart, he will teach you the way of God. He will teach you the word daily. When you turn to the word, you turn to your Bible and you start reading. Reading the book of John as a new Christian. God will teach you. He will instruct you in the part of righteousness. Great things God has in store for us. But we're not seeking. It's in the word. Whatever we haven't heard is temporary. Temporary. The Bible said, No years, no eyes have seen the things that God has prepared. The crown of life, what He have for uh, the pillow in the temple. The Bible said, I will make you a pillow in the temple. Can you imagine a pillow? Stable, one place all the time, joyfully using. God will use you even in heaven for His glory. A crown of life is prepared for you, for us. And verse, and verse 11, and the name of my God, I am not denied the name of my God. So hear this now, what the Bible said. I will write your name in the book of life and no one can take it out. I will not take it out there because I've seen you faithful, faithfully serving the Lord. So here's the last verse here, what the Bible, the Bible said. He that have an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the church. He that have an ear, and receive the word of God. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. And hear what the Spirit says about the church of Laodicea. The church that settled in the world. The church that turned away from God. And God is still jealous about this church. He said, I'm jealous. I'm jealous about the church of Laodicea. Because it's in a state of apostasy. Turning away from God. Apostasy means turn away from God. Completely turn away. 
They go to church. They relax. They said, I got everything. I'm rich. I don't need God. I got money. I'm rich. I got everything I need. And they go to church and they cross their leg and they come back home. They take communion, not only communion. And they said, I got everything. I'm relaxed. They're relaxed in the world. But God said, I'm the amen. And he that was liveth and was dead. I'm the God from the beginning until now. I never change. I've seen your worship. God sees everyone. Millions and trillions of people around the earth. God sees your worship. He said, I know your work. I know your worship. I know your labor. These people labor for this hurt. They heat, they drink, they go to church, they fix nice edifice and everything, but they don't serve God. In their way, they turn away from God. They're not hearing from heaven anymore. And what God said about it, he said, unto the church of Pledisaria, I send this message to this church, to the angel, the pastor of this church, the bishop of this church, the angel of the church. He writes, he writes, these, these things to the amen, the amen, the faithful, Jesus, the faithful witness from the beginning of creation. Hear what the Spirit said to this church. I know your works. I see your works. I see you not worshiping God. I see you laid back. But I stand at your door and I come in every day. I want to come in, but I can't even come in. There's no room for me. No room for Jesus. He said, I know that works. And they are neither hot nor cold. You are neither hot nor cold. Can you imagine? If you put something in your mouth and it's neither hot nor cold, you can't feel it. Jesus said, I can't feel you. You're neither hot nor cold. You sick me to my stomach. You make me vomit because I can't feel you. I'm going to just spit you out. You're neither hot nor cold. I wish you were hot. Then I could use you for my glory. And if you're a cold, I could show you out. But what can I do with you? I purchased you with my own blood. I know you have turned away to apostasy. It's time to return to the Lord. And God is calling the church as the last stage of this church. This is the last church of the seventh church. And God give everyone their evaluation. What will God say to you who are listening today? If God should call you right now and say, this night, your soul is required of me, where would you spend eternity? I want to tell you, God loves you. That's why he's speaking to the church and those who do not know Jesus. Everyone have a chance. Everyone you see died tomorrow or today. They got a chance. They hear the word. It's up, for you, up to you to receive it or not. Is that you receive Jesus or not? Is that you hot or you cold? But not warm. God don't want you lukewarm. To a church go up. Warming the bench. Keeping the bench warm. Keeping the church nice and everything. You clean the church. You do everything. But you don't serve God. You do everything you're big enough to do. But God loves you. And he wants you to be saved. God is not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. God is calling for repentance. The very scene around, going on right now. The things you see going on around us. Is a call to repentance. The pandemic is a call to repentance. The injustice, the thing going on in the street, the hate, everything that's going on on the street right now is a call to repentance. Can God get our attention at this time? But I want to tell us that God loves us so much that He sent warning to everyone. God is faithful, He's a faithful and true witness. They said, John, I'm faithful and true. And God is faithful because he saved me. And today, God, waiting on you, who is listening right now, God did not forsake you. God love you. And he wants you to be saved. And you can be born again. In order for you to be born again into the kingdom of heaven, you got to ask Jesus to come into your heart. Like, like John chapter 3, Nicodemus said, 
Lord, what shall I do to be saved? Jesus said, you must be born again. He said, how can I be born again when I've been born? I'm a whole man, a big man. He said, yeah, unless you've been born a second time, the second birth, ask Jesus to come into your heart and make him your Lord and Savior. Not into your heart only, but make him your Lord and Savior and come out from your sin and change your life. You can change. It's not going to happen overnight, but you have to step out of what you're in right now and ask Jesus to come into your heart. Tomorrow is not promised. No is the day of salvation. No is the accepted time. This is a warning to somebody that God love you. is knocking on your heart's door. Let him in. Open your heart's door and let Jesus in and come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior. How long will you wait? Shall this pleading from the word of God be in vain? He said, I don't want to spit you out. You're warm. I can't feel you. I don't want to spit you out. So I come to warn you. He said, your heart are cold. If you decide to be cold, then you, you reject Jesus completely. But if you're hot and you want to be hot, then Jesus can come in and make his abode in you. And the Holy Ghost can have his abode in you. So today you can be hot. So why don't you have Jesus to come into your heart right now? This is a plea. Jesus, come into my heart. I want to make you my Lord and Savior. I want to change from my sin. I don't want you to spit me out, Lord, because I feel like I'm warm. You're warm because you said you're a Christian. Yet you said you're a Christian, but you're not. The Bible says some say they are Jews and they are not. And God knows who they are. They came into the church before this. All the other church, they came into them and said, I'm a Jew. I know Jesus. I know God. I'm a, I'm a Jesus people. And they're not saved. They come into the church to rape the church, to do everything wrong, to turn the church inside out and lead the church into apostasy like this one. But this one is considered dead. But God can do something with this church. Because at the end of this chapter, you're going to hear Jesus said, there's some overcomer in every church. Every dead church, there's overcomer. And if you're not the overcomer today, you can be the overcomer. But get strength. Be strengthened. If you're a backslider, be strengthened. And say, Jesus, I'm backslider. I want to be strengthened. I want to have this hope of eternal life. Don't be a lukewarm. Get red hot for Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Carter.